In this video, we're going to look at using and extracting variables out of Forms Pro survey responses. Okay, so this starts on the survey itself. So we add the variables to the survey. When we send out the invitation, those variables are passed through within the invitation. And then when the response comes in, those responses have the variables that come back through on them. So it's all tied together. So the first thing we want to do is actually look at where we add the variables. Um, on a survey, if I click on the ellipsis at the top right here, we've got survey variables. We can see here that we've got quite a few that I've added already. The first name and the last name will notice those I don't have the ability to actually go ahead and delete those. Those come, they're standard and you cannot remove them. The rest of them I've added in. Now to add one, if I just click new variable and maybe I also want to um, capture on this one case source. So where did the case come from? You'll notice that there is the variable name and then we have a default value. Now the default value is something that would be used if that specific uh, value wasn't actually available. So for example, we've got first name and last name. Um, so if the first name isn't in uh, isn't available, we can't find the first name on a contacts record, then it will use whatever's in this field right here, so it'll say first name. If case number wasn't available, we couldn't find that for some reason, then whatever's in here will be used, so we've got to keep in mind what that default is for. So on here, case owner, if that's not available, um, which it should be, but just in case, we'll just use the word support rep instead. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and remove this. We're just going to go with these variables right here and we'll now look at how do we add them onto the survey. We can see here we've got tell us how we are doing. So I've used the first name variable. Now in order to, to do that, if I just go ahead and we'll delete, um, if I want to add it in, then when I am editing this field, if I click on variables, we'll see I can just pick first name and it will add that into the text here. So it shows to us as first name but what will happen is when we pass this through it will pull through the first name value and it will say Megan please let us know how we're doing by answering two simple questions. Going down now we can see that we've added in a very couple of variables here so we can see we recently assisted you with the following case and then we're showing the case number and the case title so again we'll see the option for any variable you add in will be added to this list. So that's how we go ahead and we set everything up. Now the next thing that we want to do is we want to have a flow that will trigger on something whatever that trigger might be for you and it will basically create an invitation or send out the survey. So if I go into Power Automate, for this example I've used when a case status changes we're basically looking to see if a case in CDS has been closed. Now for this a lot of people that use Dynamics 365 that's going to be a, a, a case in that sense that you know and understand. For anyone that's using CDS but not Dynamics you could have different types of records or you could have your flow be triggered based on when an item in a SharePoint list is updated so whatever that trigger is for you. For this instance, we're doing a condition to check to see if that case is resolved. If it is, then we're going to go and actually do something with it. Now, for my example, on my variables, I have the case title, the case um, case number or the case ID. Then I also have the owner's name and the owner's first name. Now, in order to be able to pull those values from the database, from the common data service, I need to actually get the contact from the case and then I need to get the user from the case. So those are my two actions to get a record. Then what I'm doing is I'm using the step from the Forms Pro connector to create an invitation. Now you can use either the create an invitation or you can use the send a survey option. Um, the steps are going to be the same for each of these. It's just that if you create an invitation, your final step will need to be to actually add that URL into an email or a text message or something like that. So for this, we've picked the survey and then what we're doing is we're setting the email, we need to get the email from that contact that was linked on the case. Then we've got the first name and we've got the last name again are going to be from the contact. 
Now this regarding in the recipient details, if you are using something like SharePoint or you are wanting to pull information from an Excel file or whatever it might be, the regarding and the recipient details are not needed. Um, you don't have to have those populated in here, so you could leave these two values blank. For anyone that is using the Common Data Service, then you're going to type the name of the entity, then a comma, and then you're going to pull the ID that you want to link it to. Now here's the important thing, these are the additional variables that we added into the Forms Pro survey and we can see here that from the trigger, which was when the case is closed, we've pulled the case number and the case title. And here from the, the step where we're getting the user from the case, we're pulling the full name and then we're pulling the first name. And then the last thing is we are sending an email to the contact and we're using that invitation link that is generated from the Forms Pro step. So that is our flow, that's what we need to have set up. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and we'll just pause and then come back once we've actually got um, an email that's come through. Okay, so here's an email that was generated when the case was closed. So we can see there we've also been able to pull in some of the variables into that email and we're going to click the link and we're going to look at that survey. Now we can see on the survey, instead of saying first name, we see Jane for the first name. Instead of seeing case title, oh, sorry, case number and case title, we actually see those values being pulled in. We also see the case owner's full name and there we see the case owner's first name. Alright, so in order to be able to understand what's going to happen when I complete this survey, we need to then have a second flow and we need to look at that. So the second flow will be triggered when a new survey response is received. Now regardless of what you're trying to do, whether you are trying to um, get this information and have it do things within the Common Data Service or whether you're trying to have it do things within SharePoint or whatever it might be, the response is coming into the Common Data Service. So you need to use the when a record is a new record is created, that's the trigger that we need on the entity name of the Forms Pro survey response. For this, I want to just check and make sure which survey is it from. So I'm basically doing a get record step and I'm doing this for the Forms Pro Surveys entity and I'm basically using the identifier of the survey ID from the first step. So from that, when the response is created. I'm then doing a condition to check and make sure it's the survey I want. So I'm checking on the name that it's equal to tell us how we're doing. That's the survey I'm running this on. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the um, Microsoft Forms, not Forms Pro, but the Forms Connector to do get response details. The form ID is basically um, pulling from a, a, a drop down list of all of the servers that you have. And the response ID, we need to use this expression to basically turn the source response identifier into an integer. So if you go to the website and look at the corresponding blog for this, you'll be able to just copy and paste that expression. Now the next thing that we need to do, if we don't have access to the Common Data Service, and this is the only reason that we need this step, is if you don't have a license for form, uh, for, for blah, if you don't have a license for um, Power Apps and you can't create a model-driven app to go and look at the response, you need to have this step, which is a um, a compose step which is the action, just type in compose, you're able to find it, and for the input we're just going to put the context data value which is going to be from the trigger, from the original trigger step. So that's where we're getting it from. Now the reason that we do this is if I go to look at the runs that have gone through and I just go ahead and open one of these that was successful. So once you've added that get context data step, you go ahead and fill out your survey. Just This is the only time you really need to do this. You're going to fill out that survey, you're going to come back to your flow and in the get context data, it will give you what you need to be able to continue. So you're going to do that one time, add the get context data, fill out your survey once, come back to your flow and, and get that information. Okay, so now we are back on our flow. The next step we're going to do is we're going to add a step for parse JSON. So with that, the content is going to be again that context data. And what we're going to do is the 
context data, that, that string that you got when you ran it and filled out your survey and got a successful run of your flow and you copied that context data, you're going to click generate from sample and you're going to paste it into here. That is then going to give you a breakdown. You can see there we've got case number, case title and so on and it's going to basically give you a breakdown for that. What we're then able to do is use the variables so we can see here from that past JSON step, we've got case number, case owner, case owner first name, case title, first name and last name. We have all those variables that are on our survey. We also, because we did the um, get response step from forms, we can then find all of the questions. If we scroll, there we go. Those are all the questions from our get response um, details, so we can pull those in as well. Now what I'm pulling them into is a row in a table that is stored in OneDrive. So if I go into OneDrive, um, so I've got a folder here for Forms Pro Survey Responses and I've got an Excel um, file that I have created. If I go to that, here I've got all of the different uh, values or cells, the information that I want to capture. So I've got survey, response received, first name, last name, these are all my variables and these will be the responses to the survey questions. So I've colour coded them just so we can see the survey and the response received will be from the um, survey record and the survey response record. The ones in orange will be all the variables and the ones in green will be all of the uh, responses to the questions. So I'm going to populate all of those um, when that response comes in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back through and now let's actually complete this survey. So uh, we'll just go ahead and fill out some fields. And we'll go ahead and fill that out and submit it. Okay, so that's filled out the survey. That should trigger our next flow to, to kick off and go ahead and run and get the response details and then actually put them into Excel. So now if we go ahead and we click into our Excel file, here we can see we've got all the information that's been run through in the flow, extracted out and populated into our Excel file. So hopefully this helps. You can see that you don't actually need to have access to the Common Data Service. You don't need to have a license for Power Apps to be able to create a model-driven app. You can do all of this with Flow. You can extract everything, put it into SharePoint, put it into Excel, whatever it is and the tool that you are actually using. So hopefully you found this useful. Hi, I'm Megan Walker. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and that you learned something from it. If you don't want to miss out on any other content, you can go ahead and click on my face below to subscribe and if you want to watch the next video you can do that by clicking over here and go ahead and get started. Thanks again.